What's going on guys? Welcome back to the channel. I got something to show you. Check this out. It's been a couple of minutes since I got some new parts in, but we got a package postal service today. I'm going to show you what this part is. Actually, much anticipated part, and I was glad to see that this finally came available. It's something I've actually wanted and thought about ways to potentially produce one myself for kind of a one-off situation, but somebody is making them now, so I'm pretty amped uh, to do an unboxing there. I think we're going to do a little cleanup of the car. Um, we'll see how this little vlog progresses. I don't want to have it just be a single, uh, uh, you know, unboxing video. So this will probably end up being the uh, the usual Sunday upload. So we'll see what kind of shenanigans uh, we can get into this weekend. I have a couple I a couple of video ideas that I want to get filmed uh, between tonight, tomorrow, and Sunday. Uh, and then the actual install and sort of uh, initial reaction review of this part will go up probably Tuesday. So stick around for those. And then some of the other uh, more fun driving related videos will go up, uh, you know, the remainder of the week, probably into next weekend. So a lot of stuff going on. I wanted to try to get to uh, Caffeine and Octane, Octane this weekend on Sunday down in Atlanta. But we'll see. I got an issue going on with the car right now, too, and it's not a big one, and I may have resolved it. Uh, but just yesterday, I got a low washer fluid light in the dash. No big deal. I've used it a couple of times. There's a lot of pollen. Uh, so I've, you know, obviously used the washer fluid, figured out it was low. Went to O'Reilly's, grabbed the uh, jug, washer fluid. Poured damn near the whole thing in. You can see there's just a little bit left. And uh, the light is still on. So I just, you know, first thing, washer fluid level sensor is bad. Uh, I assumed it was electronic. I'm reading some things that it is like a kind of the, the plunger style or the level, you know, the, the float style. Um, but we'll see, I guess. I, I pounded on the bumper a little bit, jiggled the top of the uh, reservoir a little bit to maybe loosen that up if that's potentially the case, if it's stuck down. You know, sometimes that'll that'll happen. It's happened in other cars uh, where that, you know, that float gets so low it kind of gets uh, caught or stuck down there at the bottom. And then once you fill it up, it just kind of, it won't go up. It happens in toilets from time to time, right? So you guys don't care about this. I don't even know what I'm talking about, but that's a, that's a current thing. So stick around. That might end up being a, a video where we have to get underneath the car or pull that side of the bumper out, but we may be changing the uh, fluid level sensor here coming up. I'm still rocking the new infinity mats. I'm not really... I'm not really sure how I feel about these still, guys. I mean, they seem to fit okay, uh, but they're not as secure as I would have liked them to be even when you kind of tuck them up and under the trim pieces. Let me know in the comment section if you guys would be interested in me giving these floor mats away. Again, they, they look decent, but it's kind of just not really my style. Nothing against the mats themselves. It's just they, they, they weren't actually the ones I wanted in the first place. And... They're just, I don't know, maybe they're, they're not really doing it for me now that they're in the car either, so. Things to think about. I love spring, but I honestly can't wait till spring is over. If it's not pollen, it's sap. Look at this hood of this car. God, it's just miserable. Blue vinyl on the strut tower bar is holding up very well. No bubbles, no peeling, no nothing. Everything is pretty good. Been on for several weeks now. Doing a lot better than the carbon fiber wrap did. This satin metallic blue from Vivid Vinyl is holding up well. Still matching the calipers, taking it. Ooh. You know guys, uh, a lot of people are still talking about the RPM Act. Uh, it's not it's kind of gone out of sight now. Uh, I don't know if it's like just part of the process and it's you know, they got enough signatures and now they're moving forward. Uh, I think there was a pretty big uh, victory in Arizona. Some stuff got tossed out in court. So uh, that's a, a good win for the industry, but not necessarily a victory yet for the RPM Act and the industry at large. Um, 
you know, still shops, uh, suppliers, tuners talking about how they're being, um, how they're being targeted. And something interesting too that I'm seeing is if you go literally to any website, you try to find test pipes for these cars. Obviously, they're removing removing catalytic converters with test pipes, and makes the car not street legal. Now, although some people are buying test pipes and not using them for race cars, they're using them as street cars, which again is not legal. Uh, but I'm wondering if there's a correlation because if you go search test pipes for the VQ37, they are nearly impossible to find right now. Uh, they're either, they say out there on back order, uh, not available at the moment, uh, not in production currently. Uh, there's some still out there, uh, but they're, they're pretty tough to find. And I don't know if it's just like a seasonal thing. Uh, people bought a bunch of them with the stimulus check or tax returns and they just are out of stock or if there's a relationship between what's going on, um, you know, related to the RPM Act and Congress and the EPA trying to crack down on, on uh, some of these things and on the, the uh, aftermarket world and the automotive industry in general, uh, it just seemed a little bit coincidental. You know, we have all of these videos coming out about the RPM Act. There's people talking about how shops and tuners and manufacturers are being targeted specifically around you know, for off-road use only type parts like headers and test pipes and, and exhaust components and things of that nature. And then right around the same time you search for test pipes and you literally can't find any. It's, it's just crazy. Uh, so I f I, I, I'm feeling like the pinch is happening. It's not, it's just a little too coincidental for me. So let me know what your guys' thoughts are about the industry. Are, are we going to be able to save the industry? Are we going to be able to save this hobby as enthusiasts? Uh, or are we going to be having to prepare ourselves for a future where you can't really buy aftermarket parts? It's a little bit scary. I'm trying to stay positive, but just doing that little bit of searching uh, the other day made me think, oh boy, here it comes. just go ahead and open this thing and then we'll talk about what it is, what its purpose is. But I'm pretty pumped about it. Pull up a chair here. These are available for other makes and models and the Q50 needs one little bit of hardware. And if you're not familiar, this might look really foreign to you. I'm going to sneeze here. Allergies are killing me. What the heck is it? Well, it is from, I think it's Pride Auto, Pride Auto LLC. And it is a rear diff brace. So this is something, if you're not familiar, is going to pair really, really well with the subframe bushing collars from Z1 Motorsports, because the purpose of those obviously is to reduce or eliminate a lot of the flex in the subframe. Uh, and the purpose of those are to help you more efficiently put power down to the ground. If your subframe is flexing, under load, you know, you're, you're trying to launch your car and your subframe flexes, a lot of your torque is being absorbed in those rubber bushings. So you install those hard, you know, those metal bushing collars and that makes those bushings more rigid and therefore reduces or eliminates that flex. So it more efficiently transfers that torque to the ground. Well, your rear diff also uh, flexes, it's mounted 
in that subframe, and I'll, we'll take a look underneath the car, uh, with, uh, you know, soft rubber, rubberish bushings as well. So, again, when your, uh, you know, drive shaft torques under load and it puts the pressure on the rear diff, that diff can, those bushings holding your diff into the subframe flex also. Uh, so this is going to mount to the lower part of your rear diff and then bolt to the subframe. And when your rear diff uh, torques under load, this brace is gonna hold it firmly in place. So paired, after that long uh, description, paired with your subframe bushing collars, this rear diff brace, diff brace is going to uh, stiffen up your rear end even further. So this is gonna help with launches. Uh, it's gonna help with cornering, hopefully. Uh, it'll help with, uh, it'll just help overall, uh, again, put that power and torque more efficiently to the ground. And when you're running the VQ37, they of course are not torque monsters. So we need to use the torque that it does produce as efficiently as possible. And that's been my goal going forward with this car is not necessarily to uh, make more power but to use the power more effectively. Like I've always said, you can make all the power in the world that you want, but if you can't put it to the ground and use it, then it's pointless. So uh, I think we can get a lot more performance out of this car without increasing its horsepower numbers. Uh, you know, a little bit lighter wheels, better tires, uh, better brakes, um, sway bars, better suspension, subframe bushing collars, now this rear diff brace, um, you know, we're just making the car nice and rigid, better grip. You know, we're only making 335, 340 horsepower, 280-ish, 275, 280 foot-pounds of torque, and uh, we're gonna use it all, trust me. Uh, again, this is Pride Auto LLC. I think it's Pride Auto on Instagram. I'll put, uh, I'll put a link to the website. There's a website where you can order these, uh, which is really cool and really convenient. You can use PayPal, uh, Amazon Pay, uh, you can, there's a lot of ways you can pay for it, which is a really cool credit card, I'm sure. Um, good dude on Instagram. Check him out. Answer the questions that you need. I think he's got some other parts available as well. Uh, really fast shipping. Uh, really good response rate. He had a maybe 50, 40 or 50 of these, I think, in stock, ready to ship right away. Don't quote me on that number. Uh, but I did ask if he had some available. Uh, so you guys want to get a hold of these right away. It's going to be, uh, they're going to go quick. Uh, really easy installation. Again, we'll take a look underneath the car, uh, but comes with the uh, actual bolt that you're going to run through this portion into the subframe to hold it uh, firmly in place. And then you just reuse uh, the bolts holding your diff cover on. And uh, boom. Easy, super easy installation. Should be like 15, 20 minutes. This originally was made for the 3.0T, uh, but it was verified that it does fit on the VQ37. So if you guys have a, a 2014 or 2015 Q50, this will work for you. Um, but what I want to do is get under the car, show you guys where this mounts to, but also figure out where I can mount the GoPro. And I want to get it under there so we can get some good angles of the diff, rear differential before and after installation. So we can see exactly how this is working or if it works at all, um, because that really is going to be the selling point. So as of right now, I recommend it because of the seller. Uh, but after the next video, I'm going to uh, be able to recommend it or not recommend it based on what it actually does. Uh, and we'll be able to see it, hopefully, uh, with some GoPro footage, so really amped. So we got the car in the air now, and we'll take a look at the rear diff while the car's up. But as I was backing into the garage, I could hear this little rattling when I got on the tap the throttle a little bit and I, don't, I heard a little bit of a rattle and that kind of is obnoxious because I hate exhaust leaks, I hate rattles and I was like what the hell could that be now I'll lose this there it is it's hitting the new diffuser I did have to the plastic one that I had them before I had to uh, trim it but this being all real carbon fiber I'm not really not really into that idea. Very tight right there. So, I think we're just gonna live with it. 
All right, here we are under the car and we're getting a clear look at the rear diff. But you can see here's the bushing uh, up where the rear diff um, connects to the subframe. Now there's going to be inevitably some flex uh, in this location. So what we're trying to do is mount this diff brace to the bottom side of the rear diff. Bam. There's a nice little cut out there, a nice, nice little relief cut uh, to go around the little uh, drain port. And then you can see this hole right here is where we will line this up and run this bolt through it. So it's a very easy installation and you can see how this would work, right? So under load, if the rear diff tries to flex that bushing because this bracket here, this brace, is mounted directly to the subframe and the rear diff itself. It's not able to flex because it's obviously a rigid style connection here directly to the subframe itself. So, in theory, this should work. Tomorrow, with the GoPro under here, and that's what I'm looking at now, where I can mount that GoPro. Uh, but ideally, when I make that video, what we're going to see is a lot of flex in this section of the vehicle. And then we'll install the brace and all that flex will be eliminated. Now if I put the GoPro under here and we do a couple of digs and we do some driving around and we don't see any flex at all, then this will be an absolute waste because it'll be rigid. But I have a feeling. My hypothesis is that there is a lot of flex in this area just like there are in the G cars and we see some other diff braces available on Z1 Motorsports that those work in those applications so there's no reason that this one won't work as well. Found a little location. I think it's going to be a perfect visual. A little wide angle shot with the GoPro of the rear diff and the rear diff bushing and then see exactly how uh, that rear diff brace from Pride Auto works out. Looking forward to making this video. Pride Auto, again, check them out on Instagram and check out the website linked in the description as well. It looks like really good quality, nice coating, uh, kind of sleek little design, easy installation. Uh, I'm pretty pumped, but stay tuned for the actual test install and test video because that is going to immediately follow this video. So it'll be up in the next couple of days or so. I'm sure I've talked enough for this video, so I think we might as well end it here. It ended up just being a little unboxing video, but we got a couple of things going on with the car, right? We got to figure out what that uh, washer fluid level, low level uh, light is all about, whether we need to replace the sensor or not. As I was back in the car in the garage, the light popped back up. So tapping on the front bumper didn't do anything to solve the issue. So we still got to address that. Probably going to order that uh, sensor this evening. Got a couple other things that I'm uh, placing an order on right now. I'm trying to talk myself in and out of a couple other parts as well. So excited about that. And again, we're going to test out this rear diff brace. So super amped. Uh, and of course, don't forget to like, subscribe, comment, whatever the heck you want. And uh, I think that's it for today. Stick around. Good stuff coming. Onward and upward for Speed Culture Studios. Onward and upward for you guys as well. I appreciate the continued support. We'll see you in the next one.